Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 7, Lesson 9, describing large and small numbers using powers of 10 from our COSD homework packet. All right, so the first two are actually um, your cool downs from the day. So I can kind of give you some sample ones to help you just refresh what we did today in class. So let's say I had a different decimal. I had 0. Point, and we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, I'll go 5 zeros, it doesn't matter. And I'll go 4, 5, 6. If I want to write this as a multiple of power of 10, what we've done so far in class is we've just taken the numbers they provided with us, okay, in this case 456, and we multiplied it by a power of 10. Now, I know that because the decimal, a decimal, right, think about 1 tenth, right, 1 tenth is the same as 1 over 10. And when you remember back to other lessons, when I had 1 over 10, that's meant, this meant that this was really 10 to the negative first power. I had a negative exponent. So a decimal is actually a negative exponential power there, essentially. So what negative number am I going to put here to come up with this decimal? To find that out, what I want to do is I want to go backwards um, all the way from the 6 to see how many decimal spots it take to get back to the decimal. All right, Or I can go this way. I can think about going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there's Eight, a difference of eight spaces there, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight digits to go back to the original decimal point. So this becomes 456 times 10 to the negative eight. And for today's lesson, we're leaving it like that. In the future lessons, we'll show you how you'd actually want to write this as 4.56, but that'll be future. We'll do that another day. We'll leave it like this for now. <laughs> okay? All right. So let's move on. And. So we'll leave it just like that. One, two, three. Yep, nine. Cool. On this one here, as an example, let's say I had a different number. Let's say I had 456 million. Okay. And if I would write that as a multiple power of 10, I'm going to keep the 456 like it is. And at the 10th, I look and simply count up how many zeros there are. Right? I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's all there is to it. Okay. Or again, how many spaces are there between the last digit and where the decimal is going to be, there are six. So use those examples to help you do numbers one and two in case your notes weren't very clear. Okay, number three, I'm going to go ahead and do A, I'm going to do D, I'm going to do F. So the first one, we have 56, that's exciting, and we multiply it by 10 to the how many decimal, pl how many place values from here to here, there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, so we say 10 to the 6th power. 19 billion. Not sure what that is always, right? Maybe you want to write it out. 19 billion. There's 19, and then this is the millions places, the thousand places, hundreds, tens, and ones. So we definitely have a 19 multiply by 10 to how many spaces are from here to here. That's going to be a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, like so. And for F, we see it's 2,000, so it's 2,000. So we can write that as 2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3 places, like so. Okay, and you can do B, C, and E on your own or check them. Hopefully you're okay. Number four, each statement contains a quantity. Rewrite each quantity using a power of 10. All right, so when lightning strikes, it can reach up to 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to take the main numbers, 54. I'm going to multiply it by a power of 10, in our case here. 1, 2, 3 zeros, so 10 to the third power. For D, Eiffel Tower has 2,500,000 rivets. So we can write 25 to go with that right there. And we can multiply that by 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, fifth power there. Okay. Here are the numbers are here, 200 million, 23,000, and 5,400. So the same pattern for those ones there. Down below, we have to complete the table. And so this is where I'm going to leave this one for you, really. I want you to use your own words and write an example here for what it looks like, OK? Because this is important. You're going to have this same thing coming up on uh, actually on your test in the, the unit. They want to make sure you understand how these things work here. So the rule is here, 
So they give you the rule each time. So in your words, what do you see happening with each rule? And then write an example. So instead of writing X, M, and M, pick some numbers out to give yourself an example here. But this is really important that you're able to do this and explain it clearly and give an example because I you'll have to do this on your on your test. At least I know it's on the review packet that you'll get in a few weeks. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.